Hello my friend, this is the Batman GM coming at you with one, another installment of my fastest role playing game revisitation for Star Trek. This is Trader Captains and Merchant Princes. Uh, this is a very nice supplement and source book to have because what it gives us is an opportunity to play an adventure in the Star Trek universe without being a member of Starfleet, being part of the Federation necessarily, uh, being an independent dealing with all the nice things that that might play, or if you want to be a civilian and do things outside the box kind of thing. So let's take a look at this. We've got an introduction to the player. The traitor is a player character. The traitor. Just saying the name might create a number of images in the mind's eye. The merchant prince surrounded by wealth, for example, with a dozen beautiful women, or the princess with the handsome men, of course, hanging on every phrase. The dashing traitor captain plying the trade routes with his noble crew, perhaps the roguish pirate plundering giant freighters for the good of the common man, or perhaps himself, or even the mousy accountant who finds himself thrust into a situation that brings out his hidden heroic nature. Creating these and many other characters as possible trader caps as a merchant princes. So, this is a supplement to allow you to create NPCs and player characters that are not Federation personnel, that are not part of Star Trek or, or Starfleet or part of one of the other nationalities that in their military. So in theory, you could have a Klingon trader, you could have a Romulan um, a pirate, or in a, you know, what have you. So we got our character types creating your trait or character, choosing a race, creating tribute, creating a tribute and endurance scores, an example of a character data sheet, background types, choosing a background, background skills, choosing a lane of advancement, Lengthy description. Generally speaking, characters who attend a merchant academies will learn more varied skills than those in apprenticeship programs because their time is taking up in study. Apprentices must split their time between study and work, but they complete their training ahead of academy students because they concentrate on essential skills only. Those who work their way up from below decks must must get what study they can at opportunity presents. This means that on the average, the characters who are trained at the academy will be the best trained. For those who become apprentices will get out of the training program slightly earlier and those who worked their way up from below decks will be older when they enter the game than others. Each lane uh, described below and I imagine each one has its own advantages and disadvantages uh, getting various initial selecting advancement lane basic training testing and evaluation specialty training and then walk you through an example of character. Jordan goes into the helm navigation special area, gains skills listed above, choosing to increase his aeronautic skill to fulfill space science's requirement. So I spend 30 points on astrogation rating, 10 points for a total of 30. Uh, starship combat strategy tactics, 10 points. Shuttle class piloting, 10 points. For outside electives, Jordan chooses another increase of 10 points for his trade and commerce score, 10 points for transport transport operational procedures. These are not part of a special area, thus, but he reasons they will be useful. He may use six roles, his six roles to improve any of the skills he already has. He chooses a role for streetwise twice, once for marksmanship, and once for a language, uh, a Ryan skill in this case. Uh, completion of the academy program, basic training, so on and so forth, especially climbing the ladder, opportunity knocks. Years of trading experience, obtaining the master's ticket, merchant life skills. This is all dealing with training your, your character to be a trader in the first place. This Jordan's player character decides Lawrence is not a name that would suit a streetwise captain of a small merchant ship. Looking at character's luck attribute score, the player character decides that although Jordan's given name is Lawrence, he is known to friends and enemies alike as Lucky Jordan. The player has already decided that Lucky does not gamble well, which can be an amusing idea for such a lucky character, or drink, no, no carousing skill. 
uh, because Lucky has spent so much time around Orions, it's further agreed by the Game Master and the player that Lucky has a few contacts among the Orion traders and in Orion ports. Gets along well with Orions, mostly because he knows never to expect an easy deal from them. Lucky will purchase a ship with his savings as detailed in section equipping trader car characters. Ship needs a name too. After consultation of his crew, who are also his partners in the venture, Lucky christens the ship the Four Leaf Clover. Game Master and player decide Lucky carries a real four leaf clover as a souvenir and a good luck charm. Supposedly brought all the way from Terra at some time. It is embedded in a small block of clear and breakable dural plastic. So, other character generation methods, methods using previous clear created characters. So, in that aspect, if you started out in, a game, in a, your game and you were a crew on uh, a Starfleet vessel or an Imperial, sh uh, you know, the Klingon vessel or something like that, and for one reason or another you either get booted off, you get mustered out, or you or you just decide to quit, which you apparently you can do in Starfleet anyway, you find yourself needing a job, you would transition over potentially to the civilian f uh, sector and find yourself working on a trade ship as an example. Uh, new skills and how to use them, bribery, forgery, value uh, estimation, trade and commerce, starting savings, determining a pay grade, base yearly savings, average yearly savings, gross savings, isn't it convenient that in a game system or in a game universe such as the Federation where supposedly money has no real value, it turns out that the civilian side of things it has a lot of value. There's a lot of economy and commerce going on in the Starfleet universe uh, or Star Trek universe outside of the Starfleet. So it makes sense that all your basic needs on a Federation member, as a member of a Federation core world, all your basic needs are met. Imagine on a Federation outpost or frontier colony things might be a lot as, as well met as they would be on a core world and you have to figure out how to address those shortcomings and then there's the uh, possibility of, of uh, needing a money for things so in, in Starfleet you, you would get an allowance if you will but your all your needs are met by the by the Starfleet. So you're no longer in Starfleet. You gotta make, make do. I find it irony that in the RPG they have such an emphasis on ground vehicles based off of what we assume humanity would still have. And we see a few clips of this in uh, the Star Trek canon. So, it's been, well, in the Calvin timeline, we see a young Captain Kirk, uh, would be Captain Kirk, stealing his uh, stepfather's Corvette and then driving it off the side of a damn cliff. So, the fact that, and then the uh, the local constable is race, uh, racing after him on a hover bike. So, the fact that you know, ground vehicles still exist but just not in the massive numbers that they might. All you have to do is look at other sci-fi ver variants to see what it would be like. Uh, the best example uh, it comes to mind off the top of my head would be the uh, uh, Fifth Element. If you've ever seen Fifth Element, uh, just how much flying vehicles that inhabit the main city there, it's, it's, it's crazy. So the fact that land vehicles represent uh, a significant piece of equipment is kind of crazy, but it is what it is. A grab vehicles, land vehicles, all train vehicles, submersibles, water vehicles, shuttlecraft, then we get into section on weapons, various types of weapons, clothing, medical equipment, environmental gear, various bits and bits and pieces of equipment. All these things would be things that your characters would want to potentially need or want or have access to and or could also be uh, merchant material in larger quantities to be transported and sold. Then we got a guide to services, lodging, meals, food, travel, other services, determining pay,
Not really part of equipping a trader character. This section does tie into the cost of goods, however, as the noted 20th century economist C. Norcoak Parkinson put it in his first law, expenditures rise to meet the income. Sometimes fair phrase is, you have to save up for these jobs. I'm just saying. Uh, Starfleet pay. See now, here it says, Although Starfleet pay grades seem rather low in comparison to other possible incomes, the pay grade is quite reasonable. Pay grades given to the table are money paid in addition to the room and board for which characters would otherwise have to pay for. So in addition to having all of his his or her needs met, the captain, Kirk, potentially was earning 3,400 credits a month in pay, which he would then would have just banked for the most part. You know, retirement pay, hazardous duty pay, port side day. Or there's some examples of bank teller, cab driver, rea- retail clerk, waiter, lab technician, what they might average in a month, judging trade, balance sheet, running a corporate bureaucracy, corporate supervisors, independent trade, and so not necessarily a ship captain could be member, you know, you might find yourself working for a corporation, the corporation owns the ship. Uh, finding your ship, securing it, determining a selling price, how much to pay for it, blue book, blue book, blue book value, What? What do you mean there's no Constellation class heavy cruisers that are for sale on the open market? <laughs> ha ha ha. Adjusting ship's age or spotting a bargain. Financing. The confidence level in combat damage. That's in case you want to buy a damaged ship and have to fix it. Or later, your, sh- your merchant ship is damaged and you need to fix it. Registering the ship. Making necessary repairs, putting repair costs, building a business. World types, finding cargoes, speculative trading, buying cargoes, paying for it, brokering it, ship contracts, delivery charges, operating expenses, unforeseen problems. Insurance, selling the cargo, passenger service, judging spaceport operations, bribes and payoffs, cargo handling and storage, the trade procedure outline right there, judging merchant adventure, venture types, Starfleet crossovers, work for so. In that scenario, what they're suggesting is to take a look at any Starfleet, any Star Trek episode in any TV series, and rewrite it so it's from the perspective of a free trader, or a merchant trader, or a merchant captain, or a member, you know, the ship crew of a corporate freighter that finds itself in that given situation. How do they deal with it, and what can they, how can they profit from it? How can, you know. What can they do? How long before Starfleet shows up and interferes, etc.? How fast do they need to call for Starfleet to come and bail them out? Ventures with alien races, the Cations, the Andorians, the Vulcans, the Tellarites. Klingons, Romulans, Orions. Venture preparation. It's interesting to know, like I said, because there was a lot of stuff that comes in later TV series. We don't see anything on Ferengi and and uh, um, the Cardassians and so on and so forth. Because at this point, they don't. They're not on the menu. They're either not encountered or, or so remote from our current timeline in the in the games that in the current. RPG game line. Excuse me. Twilight Nebula areas. NPCs. Timeline. Establishing an adventure. 
judging illegal operations, smuggling, passing custom chats, cut smuggling legal cargoes, fencing the goods, piracy and hijacking. There's a communication. Hijacking, disposing of the goods, availability, and we got a list of stuff. Judging and finance, and then a bunch of other stuff. But playing the market, bonds, large scale fleet operations, loans and finance. <laughs> There's a lot of material here. Time tra or travel, distance time, that's a nice chart to have. Trade ships, there you go. You want to be a tr pirate merchant and or civilian in the Star Trek universe.